Welcome to Integrated Medicine Perspective. I'm Dr. Wendy Liu. Um, both cell studies and animal studies have shown that antioxidants can counteract oxidative stress, reduce inflammation, and inhibit cancer growth. So it is logical for us to think of using antioxidants to help prevent cancer treatment side effects by reducing inflammation and maybe at the same time enhance anti-cancer treatment effect by inhibiting cancer growth. While the logic all sounds great, what have clinical trials shown? So let's first take a look at an important uh, publication in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2005. Uh, this was a randomized controlled trial using antioxidant vitamins, uh, vitamin E and beta carotene to help prevent acute side effects from radiation treatment to the head neck area. Of course, uh, the study participants were head and neck cancer patients receiving radiation therapy. A total of 540 participants. At relatively uh, the beginning of the trial, um, beta carotene was discontinued because of two uh, publications of large randomized controlled trials showing beta carotene uh, increased lung cancer risks in smokers. So the study uh, then continued with vitamin E as the only antioxidant supplement uh, in the intervention group. I talked about those two large uh, beta carotene and lung cancer uh, prevention trials in my previous videos, and so I won't talk about them uh, today. Um, in the uh, antioxidant for prevention of radiation side effect, um, the supplement group uh, compared to the placebo group, had uh, overall less severe radiation side effect. Uh, it appeared that the combination of beta carotene and vitamin E uh, was even better at reducing radiation-induced uh, side effects. But the alarming result was that uh, the intervention group, the group took antioxidants, suffered a 56% higher cancer recurrence rate than the placebo group. This was not what the study hypothesis had anticipated. So the study suggested that those antioxidants interfered with radiation uh, cancer treatment efficacy. Um, there's another study, um, though not a randomized controlled clinical trial, but also very important to consider when it comes to antioxidant use during cancer treatment. The study involved more than a thousand breast cancer patients. Information regarding their use of dietary supplements was collected at the time of registration and during cancer treatment. The study showed that any use of antioxidant, regardless whether it was vitamin A, C, E, carotenoids, or CoQ10, was associated with a higher cancer recurrence rate uh, and death rate compared with non-users. The study also showed that use of vitamin B12 uh, iron supplement and omega-3 was associated with a higher rate of uh, cancer recurrence and death. Many cancer treatments, including radiation therapy and uh, several chemotherapy agents, induces cancer death by producing free radicals and causing oxidative stress. Even though we do not understand the exact mechanism by which antioxidants interfere with uh, radiation therapy uh, efficacy, we know antioxidants can reduce the production of free radicals and increase the removal of free radicals. They can also help cell membrane repair. So by any or combination of those mechanisms, they can interfere with anti-cancer treatment. Um, but it is important to point out that even though we need to be careful about high-dose antioxidant supplements, we should not avoid antioxidant-rich foods during cancer treatment. Uh, there has not been any evidence of harm of consuming uh, antioxidant-rich foods during cancer treatment. 
Rather, on the contrary, there are、uh, many publications about antioxidant-rich foods linked to lower cancer risks. Uh, better cancer prognosis and a longer、uh, survival of cancer patients.、Um, we should understand that there are big differences between obtaining antioxidant from supplements and uh, from uh, actual foods. It is unlikely for us to overdose on antioxidants from our diet because our stomach naturally restricts. The quantity of antioxidants from actual foods, but if we extract antioxidants from foods or artificially make antioxidants, we bypass our stomach restriction. The method of supplements is much closer to medicinal or pharmaceutical intervention than it is close to a dietary approach. On the other hand, foods may have. More nutrients and chemicals than what we have known. The interactions between nutrients and chemicals, and the importance of those interactions, are not fully understood. So focusing just on a group of foods or a group of nutrients only is unlikely to satisfy the nutritional needs of cancer patients, or likely anybody. So from a balanced Uh, nutrition standpoint, I would recommend a diet including a wide variety of foods that can satisfy our caloric and the nutrient requirements.、Um, that's all for today. I would love to see your comments and questions, and、uh, I will see you soon.